All right, the day has come. I'm pleased to announce the general availability of .NET Framework custom code for Azure Logic App Standard. Let's go. All right, so why is this important? Uh, in June of 2023, we announced the public preview of the .NET Framework. This was at our Aviators Day, our community event. And as of this video, which was recorded in October 2023, we've now reached general availability of this feature. So on my channel, I've talked a lot about this feature in preview. Now, we haven't really made a whole lot of changes to it, uh, but you know, here are some of the changes that have been made since the public preview. We've introduced a new template that will prompt if you want to include custom code. So in the demo, I'll explain more about why that's important, but we're definitely making more of an emphasis on using workspaces. And we realize that not every time you create a logic app, you're going to want custom code. So we're just going to prompt you there. We've also supported local logging and uh, you're going to see that in the demo. And uh, this is actually a quite useful feature in terms of like when you're running these things locally and being able to emit some telemetry, some trace statements, uh, this will be quite useful for you there. And then naturally when you go ahead and you deploy this to Azure, uh, we do have this wired up to application insights. So you're going to be able to go ahead and see your workflow related traces plus your code related traces and the ability to go ahead and link them. So I have a lot to cover in this video and so let's get right into it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the benefits of using this new custom code feature. So I think number one is a no cliffs extensibility capability that complements our low code offering, giving developers the flexibility and control that's needed to solve the toughest integration problems. Now, naturally what we do want to provide is that low code designer and that becomes the most approachable surface for people to use our service. That's definitely one of our core goals. But the reality is, is more complex problems. Complex problems are likely going to require a more complex solution. And custom code really gives you more of that power. So we really see this as something that you can complement your existing low code offerings by being able to solve the problem that you need to in the way that makes the most sense for you. Now, another benefit of this, and this was some direct customer feedback that we've received, is that you want to be able to run the, this code extensibility in the same service plan. Uh, you don't want an additional service plan. You don't want another deployment. You don't want another surface that you have to secure. And by essentially being able to share the same service plan, really work within the context of the same project or, or workspace, this allows for productivity benefits for you as well, and obviously less operational friction as well. Another thing that we do offer is a local debug experience, and this is a unified experience. Um, you know, historically you would have multiple projects, a workflow project and a code project, and getting those two to work together uh, was quite difficult, and good luck if you actually did get that working, I would say. Uh, but what we've got now is a unified experience that allows you to step through your workflows and your code in the same debugging session. And so this is quite powerful. Um, this should reduce the amount of time it takes to debug your, your solution and get it working. Naturally, we did uh, initially launch this feature to help support the BizTalk migration scenarios by allowing customers to lift and shift some of their .NET framework custom investments from on-premise before. So like if you had logic that was in a .NET component, uh, we know we've talked about this on the channel about XSLT plus .NET framework, really where you've got those investments, the opportunity to, to leverage those is, is quite important. Now just some usage guidelines. Um, you know, do use custom code to implement your custom business logic. Uh, you may have custom parsing needs and, and you want to be able to do that in code. That makes sense. Doing some data validation is a natural opportunity. Doing message shaping, so the ability maybe to construct maybe more complex message like request bodies could be interesting. Ne needing to do calculations where you want to be able to debug them and test them and write tests against them makes a lot of sense. And some I would call it relatively simple data transformations. So obviously we do have the data mapper. I know some people prefer just to write their data transformations in code. 
and go ahead and um, you know use this uh, for reasonable scenarios. Now conversely, what we have not intended this feature to do is to bring the sins of the past that you've done in BizTalk and try to implement them in the cloud. And what I mean by that is really like anti-patterns in many regards. Uh, like so doing like extremely large message uh, data transformations, trying to do implement complex batching and debatching scenarios through like stateful code, um, trying to have long running processes, you know, that might take like an hour, like that's not the intended feature for this. Um, in addition, like the BizTalk pipeline components that implement streaming, those are not solutions here either. I would argue if you still have those needs, it's probably an opportunity to go ahead and relook at how you want to solve that. I think sometimes people did take advantage of BizTalk and they used it for things that it probably shouldn't have been used for. And I wouldn't think about taking those and being able to run them in the cloud. I think sometimes with a BizTalk architecture, you might have been able to get away with that because you did have maybe a lot of compute, a lot of local memory that would allow you to go do this, but things work very different in the cloud. Um, and you know it's an opportunity to, to take a closer look at what you want to do there. So let's go ahead and run the demo. Uh, here, what I'm gonna do is really just take you through the, the default experience I will also you know, show you what this looks like in the Azure portal, and then also what this looks like with Application Insights enabled as well. All the functionality that we've added is part of the default requirements for running Logic Apps in VS Code. So we don't have anything new to install here. If you've got the latest bundle, if you've got the extension working, then and you followed all of the prerequisites and I'll include a link to that in the description, uh, this should work for you. Um, if you've never used VS Code before with Logic Apps, I would suggest starting to get making sure that a regular workflow will work prior to jumping right into the .NET code because if a regular workflow uh, doesn't work, um, the .NET framework piece here is like bound not to work either. So make sure you've got a base install running and you've got sort of a hello world demo working for you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on the A and then we're going to go ahead and click on the Azure Logic App icon which you see inside of Workspace. Then go ahead and click on create a new Logic App Workspace. You're going to select a folder and this is where your project is, is going to be saved. Now we do take you through a little bit of a wizard experience here and we're going to ask for a workspace name. You can kind of think of a workspace as kind of like a, a Visual Studio solution. So it's going to bind our code project and our workflow project together. So I'm just going to call this custom code GA demo. Now this is new. Uh, what you have here is a, is a prompt that's going to say logic app with custom code project or just logic app. What you are going to see, uh, and you're going to see some of this probably in the next uh, six weeks or so, where you're going to start to add more and more capabilities uh, into the Logic App project. So uh, it could be around CICD and sort of testing and things of that nature. In order to make those things work seamlessly, we're going to leverage a workspace. So moving forward, you're going to see us using a workspace whenever you're provisioning new Logic Apps. And here, Basically what we want to do is give you the option. Maybe you don't need the custom code project, so you'd be able to select just Logic App. Uh, in this case, we want the custom code, so we're going to go ahead and select that. We need to provide a function name. I'm just going to call this Get Weather, and then a namespace. So I'm just going to use Contoso.Enterprise. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, choose a workflow. Uh, this will work with stateful or stateless, doesn't really matter, but uh, I'll just use state flow, stateful in this case, and I'm just going to call this my workflow. I'm going to give it a name. And what we do provide you with is basically some samples that you can use to get started. You should be able to get this running within a couple minutes, then obviously go ahead and tweak it and make it your own. So let's take a, a closer look here at what we've got. We've got the workspace, right? Then we've got a functions project. Then we've got a Logic Apps project. Now inside of the functions project, we've got our getweather.cs. 
This is some sample code that we basically provide. Once again, go ahead and tweak this as you see fit. Uh, but this was something very simple that you can you know, get, get running quite quickly. Uh, one thing that is new, we've added support for logging. I'll show you how this works uh, when we go ahead and run the debugger. But you'll see that you'll now have logging locally. And then also when we deploy this to the cloud in Application Insights, that this also is connected there. So this the benefit here is that you're going to see that logging experience for your workflows and all of the actions and triggers in App Insights. And if you go ahead and implement this, you're going to see those events show up there in the traces table. So you got that unified experience. Uh, here, you know, we've got some references to some dependencies. We've got the name of the class. So we took your inputs and then basically used those to basically uh, create this code. Uh, we asked you for the function name. Uh, here it is right there. We've got a workflow action trigger. This is basically the entry point for your code. So this is something where you do need to fall in line with this model in order to call custom code. You can't just take an existing .NET framework uh, assembly and call it from the workflow. You need kind of this wrapper, if you will. Now, you can certainly go ahead and reference those assemblies. And I do have a, a video on my channel already that shows you how to do that. From a parameters perspective, we tried to show a little diversity here. Uh, we've got you know some different input types. These are basically primitives. We've got integer. We've got a string. But the output is basically a complex object, right? So I've gone ahead and modeled a complex weather object here. And we're going to go ahead and return that. And this becomes pretty important when you look at all of the dynamic content that we support inside of the workflow, which makes this feature, I think, pretty awesome. So we're going to go ahead and just do some simple calculations. It's just kind of creating some random weather forecasts for a particular state or zip code. And we're going to just go ahead and return it. Now, naturally, this is uncompiled code at this point. We need to go ahead and compile it. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can click the Run Build task, or you can click on Terminal and click on New Terminal. Then choose basically the folder that's in scope. Now, when we talk about code, the scope is our, is our functions project. When we talk about running things, it's always going to be Logic App. So when we get to starting Azureite, that's going to be in the context of the Logic App. But for our code, we need functions. We're going to select that. We're going to see a terminal window down here below. We can go ahead and just issue a .NET um, restore just to ensure we've got all of our dependencies sorted out here. And then we can go ahead and issue a .NET build. And that'll go ahead and compile our code. So that's now complete. Now, what's interesting about, about when we build is we really sort of designed this feature to um, basically be kind of separate, like separate our concerns here. So we've got our code. You basically write your code. You compile your code. And then when you want to call your code, it actually needs to be bin placed. And so what that means is that we'll take the outputs of our custom code and we're going to go ahead and put it in a folder called lib custom net 472. So this is going to be our custom code and all of its dependencies are going to be in this folder. And so what we've really done is sort of separated like code from workflow and we haven't modified the workflow projects to really support this. Um, it is kind of decoupled from that perspective. So people always ask like, well, how do I manage my source code in this model? Well, you manage it the same way you would any other source code, right? You put this in source control and basically that's your um, basically your, your project for that and you keep it separate and you do version control on that. And then basically when you need it, you compile it and then deposit the DLLs before you go ahead and, and deploy it. So nothing should really change from, from that perspective. Now what we have done inside of this CS proj file inside of the custom code is basically we've got build tasks. And these build tasks will take care of basically putting them into the correct folder. Now let's go ahead and uh, go back to our workflow project. And what we did see here is we've got all these uh, assemblies that are being created and basically put in that folder. We've also created another folder, which is the same name as our function. And we're going to include a file called function.js. This is something we auto generate for you as well. And this is going to basically define all of the inputs and outputs for our custom code. This is what our designer is going to use in order to dynamically go ahead and draw the right action card and include the right inputs and outputs. 
This is not something you should tweak. This is not something you should have to touch. I'm just giving you some context in terms of what this actually is. So let's go ahead, let's open up our workflow in the designer. Okay, our designer is open. That does take a, a few seconds uh, if it's the first time you're opening it up. You will see we've got this action here called call a local function in this function app. So this is built in and you know if you wanted to add it, like this is kind of the template we provide you with, but just go ahead. I usually just type in local and that's probably the easiest way to find it. Uh, you can then go ahead and add it to uh, basically your, your canvas. Um, it is important to know like under the hood, this really is an Azure function. So we are using the function programming model, but we are then just um, running it within our host, within our service plan. So functionally, you're gonna see a lot of symmetry between the, the two. Uh, here, what we've done is uh, we've preceded it with basically some sample inputs, but this is important. Once you've compiled um, and we've basically created that function.json file, you will now see this drop down and you'll be able to go ahead and select the function that you want. You can have multiple functions that do exist uh, in the folder. Once again, check out uh, my other videos that I show you how you can go ahead and do that. Uh, when you select a particular function, we'll update these parameters um, accordingly. And so these are, are hard coded, but you know if you had other inputs, you can go ahead and use dynamic content much like anything else. Same thing when you go ahead and uh, respond, like after this action uh, is executed, you can also take advantage of those attributes. So you can do the full body, right? Which is kind of the default here. But if you wanted to get a particular attribute that's being returned, you certainly have the ability to go ahead and select that as well. So we've got basically, um, you know, our, our sample. It's a, we don't really need to change anything here. So we can go ahead and start to run it. So the first thing we need to do, much like any other local project, is start Azureite. Uh, go ahead and select the Logic app. And the easiest way to do that is just to click on the, the services here in the bottom of the window. And once you've clicked all three, uh, that will um, go ahead and start. Just as a heads up, we are working on some updated functionality that allows you to just click the button once. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, so our service is all set up and running. Now, if we want to do debugging, what we can do is go ahead and, and set some breakpoints. Uh, let's start with our workflow. We'll go ahead and choose uh, call a local function. So we'll set that breakpoint in our workflow. Then in our code, uh, we can go ahead and, and set a breakpoint here as an example. Now, what we'll go ahead and do is start our debugger. Because we want to debug both, we're gonna to have to attach to the logic app and the functions. But go ahead, start with the logic app first. Go ahead and click that start button. Uh, this will take a few seconds as well. But you know you're in good shape when you see this message here. You see the endpoints, you see the workflow action trigger being loaded uh, as well, you know, you're in good shape there. Next, because we want to debug the code, if you didn't want to debug the code, you don't have to do this, but since we do, go ahead and attach to the code as well. So now we've got both of those attached. You can see we're attached to the functions as well. Now to kick this off, much like any other Logic App workflow, we can go ahead and use the overview page. So find your workflow, click on the overview. And you know you're in good shape when you see the URL being uh, loaded correctly and the run trigger button. Uh, you know you're in good shape. Uh, once again, if you're sort of new to this, make sure you have a regular Logic App working without custom code before you try this um, because you probably have a prerequisite problem otherwise. So let's go ahead, let's click on the run trigger. And now we can see that our debugger uh, breakpoint has been hit. We can use the commands, but since I'm using recordings uh, software that also shares the F10 uh, command. I'm going to just go ahead and use the menu here. So we can step out. Now we're in the custom code. We've got our locals. We can see all of the inputs that have been passed. Then we can actually go ahead and uh, you know step into all of these different uh, lines of code. And naturally we can go ahead and hit F5 to continue as well. So the typical debugging that you would expect um, any other sort of development environment. Now, if we head over to our overview, 
our run history, we can see that our call has succeeded. If you go ahead and click into it, um, you know, we support inputs and outputs, much like you'd expect. These are the inputs that were provided. These are the outputs that were returned as well. So very much feels kind of like a connector uh, in some regards, but uh, it's, it's running your, your local code. So that's kind of the initial demo. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about deploying this to Azure. Now, one thing before we talk about deployment, which I forgot to mention, um, which is important, is we, we talked about logger, local logging. And so what you see here inside of the code, right, we're using the iLogger interface. This is, if you look at a function sample, this is identical to what functions is doing. So very much aligned from that perspective. And so we've got that being defined here uh, at the top of our code. And then what this allows us to do is to log uh, statements, you know, throughout our code. And, and this is logging information, but if we want to log warnings, errors, you know, we can go ahead and do that as well. Now, where do these actually show up when we go ahead and run our, our basically our logic apps? So what they're going to show up here is in our terminal uh, for basically our workflow. Uh, so if we go ahead and we run this again, let's run the trigger. You can we can see basically this being updated here. Uh, we've got a, a breakpoint, so that's why it stops. So let's just go ahead and continue. And what what's happening here is let's flip back to our code. Right, we had this statement starting get weather with zip code, etc. We're going to see that right here, right? So we can see that we've gone ahead and outputted those values uh, basically in the runtime. So that's where you would find local logging. So this is a, a nice way, if you don't wanna always step through things, uh, go ahead and use that. So now when we go ahead and deploy this, that information is also gonna end up in App Insights automatically provided our Logic App is configured to use App Insights. All right, so to deploy to Azure, you would follow your existing processes. Um, I'm not gonna get into DevOps here. That would take way longer than what this video is intended to do. But using your standard DevOps process, uh, as long as you've got these assemblies built and placed into this lib custom folder, then, then you'll be good. Uh, so you can just, if you wanna just do this for VS Code, just for like exploratory purposes, Go ahead and just deploy to your Logic App, select your subscription, select the Logic App standard instance, and within a few seconds, it will be there. Your compiled assemblies, your workflows, but note your functions project, those still stay in source control. It's really just how these get uh, compiled and deployed. So let's flip over to the Azure portal and take a look. Okay, so I'm in the Azure portal and I've got the workflow that we talked about before. Uh, before we jump into that, let's just take a look at our artifacts area here and then go ahead and click on assemblies. When you go ahead and do so, you're going to see the assembly that we had gone ahead and built. We're also gonna see that extensions.json file. That is that metadata file that's uh, really important for us to uh, go ahead and, um, and be able to use when selecting from the dropdown in the code action itself. Obviously, if you wanna go take a look at Kudo, you can go ahead and do so by the advanced tools. You'll see all of these files and how they're mapped in the file system as well. So let's go over to our workflows. Let's go ahead and click on that. Let's now edit the current workflow by going into the designer. Now we see the same workflow that we had previously in VS Code. Now, what happens if we go ahead and click on this action? Well, we can still configure this action. So if we wanted to change some things, we could, like perhaps if there was another function that was deployed, we could go ahead and change it. All of these inputs would dynamically update, once again, provided uh, you had uh, you know, compiled and been placed everything correctly. So you can still make those tweaks if you want. Naturally, we don't have an authoring experience, at least not at this point for custom code that is a VS Code responsibility at this point. But we can now go ahead and run this. So let's head over to Overview and we can just go ahead and run. We don't need to provide a payload, um, but if we did, we could. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at Run History. And much like you saw in VS Code, we've got inputs and outputs, uh, which is exactly what we're looking for. 
Uh, now, we don't have a response because I called this directly from within the uh, portal experience. So if I use Postman or something like that, we would naturally have a response there. So that shouldn't be a worry. Now, we did talk a little bit about App Insights, what happens there. So this particular Logic App standard instance does, is connected to App Insights. So I've already wired that up. Generally, you do that when you provision or you create that Logic App. And here we're in App Insights, basically that configured instance, and we're in the traces table. So I previously ran this, so it's already seated. We don't have to wait. But these are the typical traces that we'd expect uh, when we're running workflows. Now we're gonna see things like our workflow action starts, our workflow trigger ends, those type of events, but we also have our custom event as well. And so here we can see that it is our get weather with, with zip code. Okay, now this is where things get a little bit interesting too. Uh, I mentioned before that we wanna be able to link our custom code events to the workflow that called it. Well, we can do that through this operation ID. So let's take a look at this. It's seven or C78 and ends with 41. And if we come then down and look at say the workflow action starts, we've got C78 and then B41. So that would be one way that you could go ahead and sort of trace this end to end from, from that perspective is by using those values. So that concludes this video. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, it is GA, right? So go use it. You've got uh, no reason not to. I think uh, if you have existing, um, you know, custom code needs, you should definitely take a look at it for all of the reasons that we've talked about before. And uh, yeah, let us know how it goes and, and what you're looking for. Uh, a question that's bound to come up, and perhaps I should have had this earlier, is like, you know, what about other languages? And I can say that we are actively working on support for .NET 6, so really .NET Core, so that you would have um, access to, to newer frameworks. But uh, this, especially for BizTalk customers, uh, this is a, a no-brainer to start looking at this to see how you can bring some of those custom investments forward. So thanks for checking out this video. Like, subscribe, comments, welcome. Uh, if you are still on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Thanks.